Hello, this is Tola from Trifle Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to introduce you to an add-on. Well, this is not really an add-on, it's just a dot .blend file called the Fantasy Tree Generator. And it does, as advertised, and what it says is that it just generates a fantasy tree for you automatically in Blender. And I'll leave a link of the, the uh, for the download and the description below this video so you can download yourselves and you know just give it a test run. It's pretty good. It's pretty pretty nice. Um, it's only for Blender 3.0 and 3.1 once again. It's a f quote unquote free add-on, but if you want to send some money the developer's way, that would help him out in terms of him being able to create more add-ons like this. Uh, right now I'm using Blender point three 3.1. Let me open that up, and I've already opened up the file. Once you uh, downloaded the Blender file onto your uh, computer, and you're using Blender 3.0, because there's a version for 3.0 and one for 3.1. Uh, so three, this is for 3.1, so you just click on that. And automatically, there's a tree right here. And the unique thing about this tree, and the reason why it's called a fantasy tree, is because it glows, or it just changes color. Uh, so it's just straightforward. Let me try to go to a different uh, viewer shading here. Let's go to this one. Let's see how this looks. I don't want to click on EV because I'm running a lot of the programs right now on my computer. On my laptop, I don't want it to crash. But let's give this a second to render out. Hopefully this is not going to take too long. And it looks like this, which is not what we want. Let me make sure this is an EV then so I can... Some cycles, turn this back to EV. And let's click on the EV viewport. It's going to take a little bit of time for it to uh, render according to our progress bar. I might have to start the video back up so we can just kind of skip all this. So let me shut down the video and start it back up again when it's time. Come on, fella. Come on, guys. Yeah. Okay. It's progressing, and it's progressing, and it's progressing, and it's progressing. That was a little kitty cat out my door. Get off the porch, my man. Or you might want to hit the floor. It's at 37%, guys. Holler. <laughs> 37% and it's not going any further. Yes, it is. 50%. And it's still going much, much further. It's at 62%, 70, 80. All right, and we're back. That took a little bit of time, but now we're back. And you can see that the tree is somewhat glowing and it's got different. Um, it's not the regular color of a tree, it's kind of pinkish. You have your rocks here at the bottom, you have vines right down here. And the settings for this is located in the uh, modifier stacker. And it's just pretty straightforward. Let, let me expand the panel. You have a uh, little graph deal here you can work with uh, for the trunk profile and the trunk radius. Uh, so if you want to make the trunk thicker, I guess you can uh, mess with this, this grid here and see what you can come up with. But let's kind of expand. This is where we want to focus on at this point. And the parameters are just straightforward. This is not anything too hard to understand. Uh, let me see and expand this out a little bit more. And the, the, the base count is there. You can change that, the tree seed. And usually when the word or the term seed is used in Blender, it just means variation. It just varies the uh, appearance. So if we crank this up, you can see that it starts to change the shape of the tree. It just gives us different uh, shapes in terms of the branch and leaf arrangement. Uh, the trunk resolution, if you want a really detailed trunk, you could uh, change the parameters with that. Uh, let me see the tree distortion. Let's see, let's see what that does. Okay, that, this also kind of bends the leaves. And the, the cool thing about these parameters is you can animate all of them. So if you want the tree to move, uh, you just press these uh, little buttons on the end and this uh, sets the uh, the movements of the tree 
or the keyframes. Let me say you just press that. It may take a little time because it's uh, an EV and it animates that property. And you press it again and it takes away the animation or the key the keyframe. So you can just set the parameters, set a keyframe, set them again, set the parameters again, set a keyframe. You can get different variations, different movements in the trees, the branches, and the leaves. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. The distortion roughness. And I'm assuming that's for the bark of the tree. Let me see, let's move this up a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Uh, the tr trunk noise, which is also the roughness of the trunk. Yeah, I've got you've got parameters for the branches, the angle of it. You know, you could angle based. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So the the uh, angle of the branches varies. I wonder why it only goes up to one. That's interesting. But it can if it's on zero, the branches obviously go lower. If it's uh, if the um, parameters are set to one, it makes the branches go up, which is straightforward. You can split the angle, the branch length, uh, your branch count. Uh, right now it's at twelve. You can increase it to make the branches more, make it more dense. Uh, the leaves, this also only goes to one for some reason, so you can have a bare tree with no leaves at zero. Uh, clicked up to one and it becomes filled with leaves. Uh, leaf block, leaf seed, once again remember seed always stands for just randomness in the uh, display of anything in Blender. So that's all it does, it just uh, pretty much gives you different looks in terms of the appearance of whatever object it is in Blender, that's what seed means. And then the color, which I think is the selling point of this add-on. You can change the color. Click in there, you can change it to blue, change it to green, change it to yellow, which is interesting. Uh, you can increase the density of the leaves. Right now it's at 300. You can increase the density. You can increase the size of the leaves and so on and so forth. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, blend file. It's not an add-on. That kind of bothers me when people make add-ons and it's just a dot blend file, but they'll call it an add-on. You know, it's not really an add-on. It's just a dot blend file, uh, which is what this is. Um, you can increase. Actually, the vines is the same thing. If it's at zero, no vines. If it's at one, it has vines. So it's pretty straightforward. But for me, uh, the important thing with this particular add-on is having the ability to take it out of 3.1 and transfer it over to another version of Blender, like a lower version, like maybe 2.9 to 2.8. And I've seen you can do that. Let's go back to, because I mean, for myself on my PC, I can't uh, download 3.0 because my specs on my PC aren't, aren't as strong as my laptop. So the highest I can go on my PC is 2.91, and the highest I can go on the PC is whatever is 3.1. So I'd like to transfer something like this over to a lower version of Blender that I can use on my PC, which you can do. And all you have to do is just click on, let's turn on our options here at the top. Let me see, turn that on. And I've clicked that. Let's hold down Shift and click on these. You just can press Control J on here. If you just want to download the tree itself, just click on the tree. Left click on the tree. Uh, then you go to File. Whatever parts of the tree of this thing that you want to download, just uh, left click on it to highlight it and choose it. And then with it selected, go to File and go to Export. And then wait for an object. Click on that. And then keep all this the same. And then for, excuse me, for object properties, click, I'll put a check mark in the box that says selected only. That way it just selects the items you selected in Blender or in that scene. It won't uh, export the whole scene, just the items that you've chosen to export. And then once you've done that, just click find a place you want to transfer it to and click on export wave uh front object and I've done that already and once you've done that let me close that out too don't save 
close this out. I've exported it to my desktop here. Let me pull up uh, another version of Blender, which I'm uh, using right now. This is Blender 2. Point, let me see. I think that this should be 2.82 or 2.83. And I've imported it into here. And the way you can import it is go to File, Import, Wavefront Object, Wavefront Object and navigate to where you've uh, imported it. Don't import the .mtl file, import the .obg file. Uh, highlight that and click on import object and it imports it. Now with this, the colors probably won't be imported the way they were in 3.1, which is not a big deal. Just click on, because with this uh, .blend file, this obj, it exports the uh, object with the texture slots in place. So we have here we have our leaves. You can still change the color of your leaves to make it blue, uh, red, yellow, purple. And for the trunk of the tree, click on that too. You can change that to whatever color you want or import a texture into it. And that to me, that's what makes this a little bit more useful as opposed as opposed to just having to be stuck in only using 3.1 you can export it as an obj object or as an obj object and import it into a lower version of blender and that's today's blender quick tip and i hope this was useful to you guys and like i said before i really appreciate you guys uh, watching the videos now hopefully hopefully it's been helpful to those of you who have been watching uh thank you guys who have subscribed in the past those of you who are subscribing now and those of you who will subscribe in the future and i'll see you guys on the next one all right adios